This phone. Superstar. Watch it. You're now observing a superstar, guys. Right? So guys, <laughs> I am disturbing. What was that? Okay, now I'm ready for you. Now I am ready for you. Apologies for the delay, but thank you for showing up in your numbers. Who mobilized? Okay, and Terence, Mr. Chairman. Oh, hi. For mobilizing, I have something for you, Mr. Langa. Carbon. Uh, we know what it's all about, Moss. Come get it, come get it. Come get it. Yeah, all right. You are welcome. All right, let's maintain some order quickly because we've got uh, a great guest for you today. I've known him for now three years. He's someone who inspires me a lot. He does a lot, so you know, the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree, even though it's not the same tree. Mm -hmm. So his name is Miracle TMP Chawani. He was the MC at my wedding, guys. So as you can see, where the profile says MC, he was the MC at my wedding. And then he's an author as well, the author of the Five Rand University. Through Enviro Switch Cares Foundation, we formed a partnership when he first published the book. And Enviro Switch Cares Foundation bought five copies. Then we gave them away to deserving people. So guess what Enviro Switch Cares Foundation did for you today? <laughs> Indeed it is, actually. So Enviro Switch Cares Foundation has bought two of his books. The copies are here, and he's going to choose whom he's going to give away those copies to. So you know, you know, there's always a caveat, a proviso, a condition with me. You'll need to engage. You'll need to make the guest welcome. You'll need to learn as much as you can. But most importantly, you need to make sure that you don't leave here without your questions answered. Most important than that. He doesn't leave here without you asking him important, pertinent, and very, very, very vital questions. So a warm round of applause for Mr. TMP Miracle Chawanye. My brother. Thank you, sir. So my brother explicitly warned me before we start, or as we're coming, not to be dancing on tables, because I have a tendency of getting on top of tables and just causing havoc. So I was warned that here, yeah, we don't do that here. This is UJ, we don't do that here. You'll do it there in Pretoria, not here. So I won't do that, uh, however, I will do what I do best, and that is do my best. So, good evening, everybody. 
How are you? <laughs> oh, afternoon. My apologies. Good afternoon, everybody. Afternoon. How are you doing? I'm also good. So, usually when I'm not wearing suits and all of that, I'm, I'm a bubbly guy. But because I'm wearing a suit, I'm very serious. <laughs> Anyways, today my, my, my lecture is about this, the power of curating a personal vision and a mission for your life. So this is a management practice class. My brother told me that he's about to move into the entrepreneurship, into entrepreneurship side of things. But before that, let's deal with the personal development. And that was very profound for me because you can't do something that you are not capable of. You cannot start a company that you are not capable of running. So the main thing before we talk about the company is you, who was who will be running that company. So the question is, before you start drafting that business plan, are you capable of running that company? Should you even be the person drafting that business plan? Or would you rather donate your idea to someone else to run it for you? Because perhaps you are not ready. And that is why personal development is very important. Because it deals with you as an individual. Just as a question, I want to I wanna ask you this question. Why are you guys <coughs> doing management practice? Who has an answer for that? Why are you doing this module in particular? Anybody? Oh, there's a price. There are prices at the end of this. I just want to know anybody who's, who's like, I know why I'm doing this. Who knows why they're doing this? Why are you doing this course? Don't disappoint me. Yeah, he told me good things about you guys. So... Anybody to give it a shot, sir? Great answer, thank you. I saw a hand here. Ma'am, you had your hand up. Thank you for that. But do you want to be an employer? Who wants to be an employer? So I see hands. People who want to be employers. And ma'am, why do you want to be an employer? Great answer. So a hand to the side. You want to be an employer. Why do you want to be an employer and not an employee for the rest of your life? Yes, again. Yes. Be honest. <laughs> the rest are lying. Be honest. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> it's a good answer. It's a good answer. So, let me tell you a little bit about myself. 
My name is Miracle TMP Chawane, as my brother has already introduced. I studied environmental sciences <clears throat> all the way to master's level. And I didn't finish my master's. I only completed one year successfully. And only at the last year of my studies was only left with research. I didn't complete that. And I became all of these other things that my brother introduced me as. An MC, a public speaker, public speaking champion of Toastmasters, and an entrepreneur, an author of books. I've got an online academy where I teach personal development, communication skills, and different type of things. And how did all of that happen? After spending more than eight years in school trying to become an environmental scientist, which I became on paper. But I got an opportunity along the way to work at an environmental company, not as an environmentalist, as a business development manager. So I was there exposed to the work of an environmental scientist to a point where I was given an opportunity to say, hey, there's a post here. Don't you want to fill it in instead of us going outside and getting new people outside? You already know the job. You are seeing what's happening. Guess what I said? No, I don't want it. I'm fine right here. So I was fine doing something I'm not qualified for instead of something that I'm actually qualified for, which was easily open for me. And the question is why? And that's where we are going to be focusing on today. That's why I was asking you, why are you doing this course? And perhaps you may get answers after today. <clears throat> the topic is the power of curating a personal vision and mission. So what we're going to cover today is why should we even care about a vision and a mission for your life? Why, why should you be bothered by it instead of going out and doing other things? What is the difference between a vision and a mission? Crafting a personal SWOT analysis and becoming worthy of your vision and mission. Those are the things we're going to cover in this. So I need you to go with me. Why should we care about crafting a personal vision and a mission for your life? Why does it matter? Anybody to give it a shout? You can just shout without raising your hand. Shout. <laughs> just shout it out, Jay. Good. Well done. Anybody else? So you can be the best version of yourself. Well done. So, many of the social ills that we are dealing with today, crime, whatever that may be an ill, I can't even mention them because we're living in a very tricky time. When you say something is an ill, they'll, sell, they'll tell you it's life, man. <laughs> Who gave you the reason to say, to say that? So you can't. Alcoholism, <laughs> drug addicts, all of the things that we are dealing with that we are trying to overcome. <laughs> Oh, we have one, yeah. <laughs> we have one. It's fine, my brother. We're all addicted to something. We're all addicted to something. It's just that yours is the other one, but it's okay. So all of those ills that we're dealing with, teenage pregnancy, uh, those, whatever we're dealing with, that is, you know that is an ill in society. It's because of a lack of a vision in your life. And I'm going to expound on that. <clears throat> Without a vision, any sensible direction, as she said, is right. <clears throat> so whatever that seems like a direction you go, in my case, it felt sensible to be an environmental scientist. I didn't even know what environmental science was about. But when I was asked, what are you going to do after school? I was like, I don't know. They're like, okay, there's a course called environmental science. I'm like, sounds good to me. And I went in. So any direction, any sensible direction is right when you don't have a vision. Without a vision, any sensible association and mingling is right. So because this person is known to be a celebrity, then you think I should connect with them. Because this person is known to be an author, maybe I should get their number. Because this person is known to be a, a, a crank, a, a smart guy, then I should get their numbers. So any sensible association 
you feel like it's right without a vision. Because it sounds good. You have no direction after all. So at least take a direction. Whichever one, I'm going to take it. That is because you don't have a vision. A vision and a mission will give you a sense, a sense of identity and make way for who you are meant to be. And that is why I say a lot of social ills that we are dealing with are because people do not have a vision for their lives. Think about it. If I am going to Pretoria after this, I know my way from here is N1, Pretoria. And then you come to me and say, Mapra, let's keep the pass by Rustin Bay. I know I'm going to Pretoria and I have a clear mandate of what I'm doing at Pretoria. Will I go with you to Rustin Bay? <laughs> Maybe it's a good answer as well. Maybe it's a good answer. But why is it maybe? Why would you go to Rustenburg? Because what? There's an opportunity to that side, yeah? Someone else say? Eh? Exactly. Any other answer? So you are right. Maybe. And why is it a maybe? Because your sense of direction is not well defined. <laughs> In that example, do you understand what I mean? In that example, your sense of direction and what you're going to do in Pretoria is not defined. There's no sense of agency. You're not running after anything. So someone says, let's go to Rustin. You're like, it's fine. I've never been there before. Vele. Let me go check or didn't talk. Let's keep up with my watch. I <laughs> understand. You end up in Rustin Bay. Who knows? Will you ever come back to Pretoria? Who knows? Who knows? Only God can know. <laughs> Do you understand what I mean? That's why I say many of the social ills. It's people who were pulled into something. I mean, crime, for example. Think about crime. I'm unemployed. What am I doing with my life? I'm not going to school. I'm hungry. Hey, brah, let's go. There's a, something I saw that side. You'll be fine when we come back. What, what do I have to say no? Do you understand? I have nothing already that I'm doing. Someone is giving me an alternative. Let's rather do this. Oh, very so many let me go. Are we not going to die in faith? Don't know why, Prayer. I've been in this game for, for a long time. That's how people get in there. Before you know it, they're stuck. From Pretoria to Bloemfontein, from Bloemfontein to Eastern Cape, you forgot who when you were going to Pretoria. Because you don't have a vision. I don't know how many people believe in God here. Ah, it makes my job easy. <laughs> they don't want to say something that offends you, but even if it offends you, I get it, you have a right to, 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 I have a right to say what I say. You have a right to decide whether you're offended or not. <laughs> so, in the Bible, there's a scripture that says, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper. You know that scripture, Musne? And it says, I knew you before you were born, before you were even formed. Here's a question. If this guy called God who knows everything about you, he knows everything about you, and he knows the plans he has for you, basically he knows where you're going, why does he not give you a template when you are born to say, this is exactly what you follow, so that you don't go into all of these problems? Why does he not do that? Okay, there's a hand here. Let's do the hand. Let's do the hand business again. Let's do the hand business again. Yes, ma'am. To be in the same WhatsApp group with him. <laughs> yeah. All right. Also an answer. Yes. Mm.
But he has it. If he has it, why not just give you the plan? <laughs> why should you be wondering all this time? Who knows if you ever will find it? What if you end up never finding it? All right, answer it and answer as well. Yes, ma'am? Please clap for this one. My brother, I don't wanna. <laughs> I don't I don't wanna wait until the end. This one has already done justice to me so far. <laughs> Here's a book for you. Here's a book for you. What 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 what's your name? Natasha. All right. Oh, this is what she said. Basically, Mara, this one stole my notes, this one. <laughs> The reason why, this is what she said, the reason why he doesn't give you the template before you are born, it's because of this. He gave you the dignity of choice. He gave you the autonomy of choosing whatever you want to do with your life. That thing is so big such that even if you choose against him, he cannot do anything about it. That's why we have all of these many people, people who, don't, who are atheists, people who are what, what. He doesn't have power to dictate your choice. So even though he has a plan, you have to choose if you want that plan. And that now takes you to start sitting down and drafting the vision for your life. That's the power of a vision and a mission. And that's what Natasha said. However, until you have a vision, your mission or missions are temporary. Now there's a twist to the whole thing. We're twisting the whole thing. Until you have a vision, your mission or missions are temporary. Meaning there's a difference here between a vision and a mission. And we are saying until you have a vision, Whatever you're doing as a mission, if you say my mission is this, it's temporary. What does that mean? It takes us to this. What is the difference between a vision and a mission? Anybody to give it a shot? The difference between a mission and a vision? Yes, my lady. You are not 100% wrong, Mr. Holan, we didn't mark you down for that. Yes, I saw a hand there. Uh, no. I was going to say, okay. I was going to say like a vision is, um, oh. I was going to say that a vision is like what, what they, they usually say is what you see, you hear, but like you said, at a distance, mm. you, like you, you, it's like a direction you want to go mm -hmm. to. Yeah, that's a vision. Mm -hmm. And then a mission, it's putting, like now, work to get to that, um, to that, mm -hmm. whatever you see for yourself. Basically, what she was saying. It's interesting how people will say, no, she took what I wanted to say, and then they say something completely different. <laughs> <laughs> but you are right. All of you are right. And the reason why I'm saying you are right is because there are many definitions and descriptions of what this vision and mission is. Go on, you, go on Google and say difference between vision and mission. You'll see many things, many things. What, the one that made sense to me is this one from mindful.com, which says a vision is a desired position, exactly what the two of you said, of the business in the future. It's a description of the why. Not to be used for the daily operations of the company. It is to motivate employees. The statement is usually shorter. 
Whereas on the other side, it's the current state that today, what are we going to do today or this year? What are we going to achieve? What are the steps that we're going to take in order to achieve that? It's focused on the how. It's to be used as a management tool and it's to inform the employees. Lastly, it's usually bigger than the vision. Bigger means more broken down. Whereas the vision, perhaps, is we want to become the best company in IT. Then the mission would be we need to service the corporate, we need to service the academics, we need to service the offense, we need to service all of this. Now the missions are different and they are many, they are bigger. Hence I said, if your vision is not well defined, then your missions are temporary. Because what are you doing? Which vision are you following when you are doing all of these things without a specific bigger picture that you are going moving towards? So, and that's where we find ourselves in most of our times. We find ourselves doing things because they are good, they are beneficial. I was studying environmental sciences because it was a good thing to do. You must get employed, go to school, get employed, and get a job. It's a good mission. Do you get what I mean? It's a good mission but I didn't have a vision for my life. So it was a temporary movement. Today I'm somewhere else. So this, what I'm about to show you, is exclusive content. Exclusive content. And I did it in confidence. I trust you without even knowing you. What a risk. <laughs> This is my vision board. <laughs> I trusted you in confidence. You are laughing at me. You are laughing at me while I trusted you in confidence. So this is my five-year plan. It was drafted when? On the 8th of September, 2022. And I did a vision board for my life. Remember what a vision does. It serves to what? Motivate. Just by looking at this, I'm like, can I be there already? It motivates me. And don't worry about that picture. It's exactly that inside the air. <laughs> it's exactly like that. No Photoshop. And all of these things that are there. So looking at this, do you think I have time to be pursuing things that won't lead me here? So that's what a vision does. It keeps you focused on where you're going. Before you look too much. <laughs> so a vision in my breakdown, in my own definition, because that was an organizational vision description. This is a personal vision description. It gives a sense of who you are meant to be. Not who you are, but who you are meant to be. It's a future state of who you could be. A mission gives you a sense of who you are. Who you are today. Do you have what it takes to get to that vision? Maybe not. So let's come up with a mission to get you closer. I must wake up every day and go to the gym. At first four, I'm up every morning. I'm at the gym five o'clock. Because I'm trying to catch up to that guy. Do you understand what I mean? <clears throat> the mission is the means to achieving your mission, your vision. It aids into the bigger goal and the bigger picture. And the mission checks what you have in order to become who you are. Or oh, what what you have to have in order to become what you want to be. And that's where the SWOT analysis comes in. Because you can't move into the vision if you don't know who you are. And if you don't know what you have to propel you to becoming that what you want to be. So that's where the SWOT analysis comes in. And what is a SWOT analysis? Yes. 
this is um, the threat of the opportunities that you might have. Awesome. Awesome. Now, help me understand. Give me examples of strengths as a person, as an individual. What could be strengths? Hey, you look like no chill, bruh. <laughs> you look like no chill. You know no chill. You don't know no chill. Yeah, you look like him. I thought you were him. <laughs> Maybe you don't have chill as well. <laughs> Anybody to, 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 to give me a strength? An example. Any example. What's your strength? Just tell me your strength. Yeah. <laughs> yeah? What did you say? <laughs> yeah, your situation is dire. <laughs> she only has weaknesses. Yeah, that's a dire strait. Yes. Beautiful. Beautiful. What else? Yes. Uh, I wanted to uh, also mention emotional, emotional intelligence, but also being able to work smart within having to make time for certain things. 100%. Yes. So, and also being specific of what to make time for. 100%. Yeah. The strength. Being able to organize your life. That's a strength. Organizational skills. What is the other strength? Yes. Discipline is a strength, a very powerful one. Not many people have that strength. I struggle with that as well sometimes. <laughs> I care, I must be honest. What, what, what else? Ah, you are scared. Yes. I think it's a big strength. Exactly what you're saying, guys, and you're not wrong. <clears throat> so basically, personal sort analysis is crucial for setting yourself apart. Guys, you are now doing your final year, right? You are hoping you get a job after this. Some of you are hoping you get into honors, all the way to masters. All of those things I mentioned now, they need you to be a person that is different from the crowd. All of them. You know the unemployment rate right now in South Africa? And you are still going there looking for a job. <laughs> and why are you still going there looking for a job? Because jobs are there, guys. Every day, people are being employed. Do you know that? Today, people were employed. Tomorrow, they will be employed. The whole year, people will be employed. But we are still going to say unemployment is high. So who are these people that are being employed out of nowhere, NJ, when unemployment is so high? Huh? Is that what? Whatever you said, I agree. So, here's my point. You need to be set apart. You need to be different. And how can you be different if you do not understand yourself as well? What makes you different? And that's where the sort analysis comes in. If you can understand yourself like that, it's called self-awareness. You know yourself enough to know that if I'm applying for a job at Capitec, for example, I'm bringing this. And these are my strengths. Because you know yourself that much. And that's where strengths is what you can do with ease. You know that this is easy. For me, thinking on my feet is very easy. I'm, 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 I'm very, very fast. We were doing with, uh, we started doing, uh, what is it? Is it a segment? Or oh, we started doing this, let's say segment. This, my upcoming videos, I'm a YouTuber, by the way. <clears throat> So I'm a social media person. You can follow me at The Miracle Perspective. So on, on TikTok, we started these new videos where, you know the word of the day that is done every day. Hey, what's the word of the day? But you are asking the person who's going to answer. So with me, we're doing it the other way around. I ask the person who's shooting, what's the word of the day? They give me a random word, unprepared. Then I come up with something, a speech. And it's powerful. It hits. <laughs> hey, it hits. I'm telling you, it hits. That's why he's the Toastmaster champion, actually. There's two categories. One is unprepared and one is prepared. So for unprepared, he's the national champion. Yeah. 
Thank you. So that eh, you want a test? I want a test. No. <laughs> you want me to embarrass myself? <laughs> <laughs> But that's the thing. When you know yourself, you know what you're good at. You know what your strength is. You can even take that chance of going online and doing this outrageous stuff. The videos will start popping in. You should follow that, guys. It's, gonna be, it's very interesting. Because they're giving me a word I'm not prepared for. And it's a, it, 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 it's, a, it's a short. You understand? A YouTube short. You can't go over one minute. So I have to come up with something profound within that minute. And I kill so that's my strength. Resourcefulness. Resourcefulness is my strength. I can, we can be locked in this room. I will find a way. Already I just saw a way. <laughs> I can't show that on camera. I can't show that on camera. I refuse. <laughs> I'm resourceful, guys. I can use whatever I find to get out of any situation. I'm resourceful, I know. And that's why having me in a team makes it super wonderful because whenever we're stuck in a problem of a, a situation of a problem, I will always find, how about? How about? And we are using whatever we have. We don't have to have many things. Just whatever you have. Back to the Bible. God used that stick that Moses was holding. Moses was looking for a way. Hey, how do you cross this Red Sea? He's like, hey, what are you holding? A stick. Go. You get what I mean? It's resourcefulness. So you need to know that about yourself. And networking is other, a skill that other people have. There are people who, who know how to share minds. The people who organized uh, the brother there, who, who won the book. He was, apparently he was the one uh, campaigning. What was he doing? He was he mobilizing. Went, he was what? Mobilizing. Mobilizing. It's a skill. You understand? To get people to follow you. Let's go. Where are we going? You will see forward. In the <laughs> That's a skill. It's a networking skill. And organizing, we did already touch on that. You are good at organizing. Maybe you are a good admin. You know how to write things in order. It's the things you are able to do. But those are things you need to know. And also the things you lie about on the CV. As much as you are acting like you don't know now, if there's a job opportunity coming and say, write, write what you are good at, hey, the things that are going to come there. And you are lying, you know. <clears throat> I can work under pressure. You know. <laughs> you know you can't. You, you, you get stuck. <laughs> so that is an example, guys. The weaknesses that our lady only has, unfortunately. <laughs> so it's things that hold you back. Those are weaknesses. Things that generally hold you back. Keep you in the same place. Fear, I'm always scared. They say something. <laughs> I want an answer. It's holding you back. So those are weaknesses. Maybe you have a short temper. You never show up. Where now? Nah. Hey, I'm coming. Show me. See you on Friday. You know you are not coming anywhere. <laughs> you know you are not going anywhere, and you always agree. <laughs> and people like you. People like you. They never say no. <laughs> They'll never say no, I'm not coming. They always say yes, I'm coming. Never to show up. <laughs> or maybe you don't just keep your word. I'm, I'm going to do this and you never do it. Those are weaknesses. And they're going to bite you. And this is how they bite you. Coming to the threats and uh, the opportunities. I know they're defined differently in the business world. And it's, okay. it's all right. If it works for you, it's right, guys. <laughs> So how I put this to make sense is use your strengths to create opportunities for you. That's how you should look at opportunities. How you can use the strengths that we have already defined here to work for you. Fine, you are done with school. You're looking for a job. No job. You're applying. Unfortunate, you will regret. You're applying. Hey, we regret. When are you always getting regret? So now it comes back to you. How can you use your strength to give you an opportunity of employment? The brother is already a mobilizer. He knows some people. He knows that he can talk to Uncle Who. Who knows Uncle Who? Who can give him a job? You are using your skills, your strength to do opportunities. Whether you know you're an organizer, 
you are good at organizing. You can go on LinkedIn, look at companies that are doing bad, smaller companies. You know, obviously, they have an organizational problem there. The owner of that company is struggling to manage all they are doing. You tell him, say, I would like to come and work for free. You see, now you're using your skills or your strengths to create opportunities. So that only comes when you understand your sort analysis, my people. So basically, it's like leveraging your strengths to capitalize on opportunities. Now you have an opportunity. You are sitting one-on-one -on -one with, or one-on-four -on -four with the interviewers. You had a job interview. You got the opportunity to go and sit down with them. How do you leverage your strengths to get that job? It's one thing to be called for an interview. It's another thing to actually get the job. And that's where the setting apart comes in. It sets you apart. And this is where you sell yourself on your strength. You get what I mean? So there's so much power and value in that. <clears throat> and then what are threats? In my understanding is how your weaknesses hinder you from achieving your vision. Those are threats. Madam, <laughs> those weaknesses, <laughs> they might hinder you in achieving your vision and what you want. So it's like you're always not showing up. When are you never show up? I'm coming, Choma, and you never come. You are building a reputation of non-performance. Me, the Choma, that you are not always coming to, and you always told me you are coming. My uncle looks for people. He wants people who are going to come and do something. Or there's an opportunity, a tender nyana that came up. Do you think I'm going to call you Choma? So small actions that you do every day that will spiral and affect you sometime in the future. That's why you need to be able to handle this. You need to be able to handle your, your weaknesses. Don't be happy with the I mean, I never show up. Don't be happy. There's nothing to be happy about that. You need to try your best. When you say, I'm going to do something, you do it. Because you are building a reputation. And it's also a testament in my life right now because... My brother only saw me on YouTube doing whatever I do as a motivational speaker. I'm speaking to people, what a what a what a what. He saw me on my social, on my, on my statuses, posting as an MC. He invited me to his big wedding. He paid me. Don't, don't do for free. <laughs> <laughs> paid me nice money and I chowed it. <laughs> and I went there, I killed this wedding. I killed it. Why? Because I am fostering this culture of performance. Whatever I find my hands to do, I do it like it's the last day. Today, he called me up here to come and be a lecturer in front of you guys. But you guys are doing... This is serious business, Buffett. You are paying to come here, to come and sit down and listen like this. This is serious... What I'm doing here is serious work. I'm not playing here. Because it has to do with your lives and where you're going in your future. Imagine if I tell you something wrong, you end up in the ditches somewhere because of what I said. Do you understand that I'm guilty? I deserve prison. So this is serious. So for my brother to trust me with such a serious role, there has to be something about me that he has observed. You get what I mean? And it's things you must find out about yourself. So you need to handle your weaknesses to prevent them from posing a threat. Because they could threaten your job opportunities. They could threaten your business opportunities. Some of you are friends here, yeah, but you know you can't call your friends to start a business with. <laughs> you know, you'd rather go to the other group and get someone there. So, so <laughs> look at yourself. All of these things, what do they mean? If you know them, when you know your sort analysis, when you know yourself that much, what does it do? It's a confidence booster. It builds confidence in you. Nothing can ever catch you unaware. <clears throat> Nothing can ca ever, ever, ever catch you. You won't be shocked. It's like how I told you now, Hori, unprepared, I kill. It's things I know. I have done my sort analysis. It's my strength. So when someone says, hey, when are you good at this impromptu thing? How do you speak without preparing? I already know. It doesn't shock me. I'll just be humble and say, hey, serious. <laughs> ah, man, I'm, I'll thank you, man. I didn't know. 
I'm just trying to be humble to make you also feel good. But in the back of my mind, I'm like, I know. <laughs> I prepare hard for these things. You get what I mean? So when you know, when you have this in check, you are unstoppable, you are killer. So it's very important. Very, very important. That's why I want it to be an assignment that you do. You are, you are at a crucial stage of your life. I'm sure some of you have already started applying for jobs. You've already started, right? Eh? Oh, some of you are working. You, man, chaser. Levels. Levels. So it's important to know this as you are working. You are developing things because now your question is, how will I know if I'm resourceful? How will I know my strengths? It's by exposing yourself to opportunities. Be busy. You have to start being busy. There's, there's groups, there's so, societies that you can join on campus. Be busy. Those will expose you to you. You'll find out what you are good at. Now, becoming worthy of your vision and mission. Because as much as my vision is beautiful, you saw my vision is beautiful and I wrote it very nice, that it's such that it's beautiful. But am I worthy? Does my vision think I'm worthy to get it? That's a question you must ask yourself. As much as you want those nice things, do those nice things want to be had by you? They don't have a choice. Now let me show you that they have a choice. Is you never getting there. That's them choosing, not choosing you. Because you'll never get there. It'll just remain a dream. A dream unrealized is just a dream. So, <clears throat> you have to become a person who's worthy of achieving those goals that you've set. The vision that you've laid out. You first must become worthy of that. And that's why I said in the beginning, this particular segment of personal development before you learn about organizational development is very important. Because you need to ask yourself, am I ready for that which I want? Do you know I blew it? <laughs> you know I blew it, ne? What can you give? What's your analysis to that? To those people who are always there, I blew it. They got four, four million. Maybe they won it from the lotto or it was an inheritance. And they blew it in two months. Hey, they, hey those people chow man. Yay, those people chow man. What does that mean? It's a typical example of what I'm talking about. They were not ready for that type of success. They were not deserving. You understand what I mean? So you have to become a multimillionaire before even holding those millions. If you want to be a millionaire, you want money. Are you a millionaire already? So you must become a millionaire before the money catches up. It must, the money must be the one delaying you. Me, I know I'm a multimillionaire. It's just delaying me now. <laughs> so, essentially, my people, curating a well-defined vision, mission, and a clear sort analysis are essential. Super essential for your success. Whatever that may be. Whatever that may be for you. This things that I just shared with you are super important. And you need to sit down and do it. And from me to you, it's finished. It's finished. My brother, Job well done. Now the job is yours, guys. Job well done from him. Now the job is yours. And your first job is to ask him questions. By the way, it's deliberate that I switch things around in the module. According to the learner guide, it's first organizational development and then how you fit into the organization. We are on unit four now. Those that have been attending know. Yeah. 
the others, I can see their eyes. They tell their own story. So you first have to fit in to the puzzle. You are the piece of the puzzle that fits into those organizations. But you can't fit in without first understanding yourself, and that's why I deliberately twisted it. Another element is using the pastel method. So he's already assisted me with dealing with SWAT. Now we're gonna deal with uh, pastel method as time goes on, and then we're gonna go into more depth as far as organizational development is concerned. I can easily ask you a question around the contrasts between personal development and organizational development, touching on, for example, vision and mission. How does the vision speak to an individual? How does a vision speak to an organization? And how do you interconnect those two? So it wasn't just a fun lecture. Thank you again, Terence, but it wasn't just a fun lecture. It was deliberate. So even now, ask as many questions as you can actually get out of him. Because remember, some things, unless you can pay him, unless you are me and you can pay him, this is your opportunity. First question. I'll give you my mic even. How about you ask them a question to kickstart? Okay, she has a question. Awesome. Yes. You said you said you're not bubbly in suit, but like you're bubbly. Did you were you always like a, a bubbly person? Were you always this confident? Were you always? Did you always know yourself? If if not, how did you like cultivate that that you have now and like the preparedness and? The first and easy answer is no. <clears throat> I was not always like that. <clears throat> I was not always confident. I was always maybe bubbly. But my bubbliness was a coping mechanism to my lack of confidence. Mm -hmm. So I was compensating for the lack of confidence I had. <clears throat> because I'm a pastor's kid. As a pastor's kid, I didn't want to be known as a pastor's kid. So I converted that identity into being a clown. So I mean, I was sitting at the corner there in class like this. I was the guy at the corner. Whenever someone says a teacher is teaching, I take a word, I twist it, everybody laughs. Mm -hmm. So I was that guy, the life of the party. Mm -hmm. But that was me trying to cope with this lack of confidence. If they had called me, you know those, you know the people like me, you call them, come and say something, you come here, we don't even know what to say. <laughs> so I was that type. I was not confident in saying something that makes sense or something that can add value to people's lives. I was confident making jokes there in the back seat. So that is not confidence. It's insecure confidence. So how did I change? Which is your next question. How did I become this vision? I had to start taking myself seriously. Now looking at the future. Because I was now at closer to my final year. This is when it happened. I actually, I should have answered this, my brother, earlier in the interview. What sparked the thing, I was doing my final year at university. And I realized I need a job. And apparently, to get a job, you must have some experience. I mean, I've been playing at school. I've never been part of any organization. I've never been part of anything. What am I going to put in my CV? Because my CV? I realized my CV is very simple and straightforward. It's short. It's not going to convince anybody. I'm like, yo, I'm late. I started joining a nonprofit organization called Mamelodi Initiative, where we're, now, where we're teaching school kids computer literacy. And I started being busy. I was very, very busy so that I can fill up my CV with some stuff. Lucky enough, I failed one module, which required me to now extend with another year. And then I extended. Knowing that I want to get into honors, I don't know if it's possible here. I don't know if it's a wrong trick, but this is what worked for me. I knew my marks were too low. I don't qualify for honors. Then I re-enrolled for those easy modules that I did last year, which I passed with a low grade. I re-enrolled knowing that I'm going to quickly ace it and I'm going to get high marks, which are going to push up my average. 
so I get ac accepted for honors. And now I'm doing that because of what? Vision. I want to get into what? Honors. So what must I do to get into honors? Re-enroll. Do you understand where, where this is going? Yeah. The vision became the whole leading force. And now because I've started being a tutor, I can't stop. I'm trying to build up my CV so I get a job. And with those opportunities to speak in front of kids, teach them, I started becoming more confident as I do it. More confident. And my identity changed along the way. I saw myself as more of a teacher than a clown. And that's where the transition happened. So first, the vision is important. When you have the vision, where am I going? Then start behaving like the person who deserves that vision. So that's the answer. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Yes, sir. Okay. I want to ask, since uh, you switched from uh, doing environmental science mm. and on what you are doing currently, is it something you are settling for? You are planning to do something else that is outside what you are doing currently? Going back to the vision. Let me show you where it plays. Let's go back to my, my vision board. I told you guys, once you have a vision, your life becomes simple. Because it's easy to deal with whatever comes in your way. Here we are. So where does that come in? I'm a speaker, right? I'm a coach. We have got this, TMP Coaching and Consulting. The vision is to have a company which will employ at least 20 employees. Here's the TMP office. You see where I'm going? Yes. So as much as I moved, many people don't understand it. I can't explain to people. What are you doing? I usually have a problem of explaining that because people won't understand. I'm a speaker. Just that. <laughs> I mean, how are you, what are you doing to get money? So those are the questions that I can't really answer. So at the moment, I have a driving school. I teach people how to drive. Is I was it... about to plug when you stole my shine. <laughs> Sorry, bruh. You stole my shine. Sorry, bruh. Sorry, bruh. Sorry. How many of you do not have licenses currently? All of you. Oh, all of you are my clients. And in environmental health is a license of prerequisite. Yes. Why don't you have licenses when there's people like Miracle, who has a driving school, and who actually can provide that service for you. There are people like, meaning there are driving schools, right? I'll tell you why you don't yet. You're waiting for him. You are waiting for him. So those details, all those details at the end there of his presentation, they aren't decorating. Ne? They aren't decorating. How long have you been doing that, my brother? Since 2017. Since 2017. How many people have got their licenses through your oh, service so far? More than 100. More than he can count more than, is more than 100. Yeah, I can't even count. count. So mm -hmm. take his details, guys. Let's plug each other. And let's empower each other as well. Ne? And interesting enough, when I started my driving school, I was still a student. I had a car that was giving me problems. <laughs> <laughs> so I always needed to solve that car. I was a tutor. I was getting paid for that. And I started working as well for another company, telesales company, uh, where you call people and sell insurance. While I was a student, so all the money I was earning, because I was a good salesman, getting a lot of money. So all the money I was earning, I was fixing this car, fixing this car. I got frustrated. This car is always taking my money. What is it doing for me? I was like, no, it must now fix itself and do something for me. And that's where the idea of a driving school came in. Let me teach people. Since I started, I've never poured petrol from my own money. It's pouring petrol for itself. I'm fixing it for itself. I now have two cars. And you're like, but I didn't have a truck. How was I doing a driving school? Resourcefulness. There are people with driving schools. I'm giving you an idea now, some of you. There are people who have driving schools. They've got trucks. I market my students. I teach them how to drive with my small car. When they are ready, we take them to those guys. I partnered with a driving school. 
they do the truck lessons and they go and test with them. My business is going, I'm eating, I'm fine. And it's nowhere on my vision board. You can see that. Can you see that it's nowhere? My driving school is nowhere on my vision board. Why? Because it's a mission. It's not a vision. It doesn't feature in the bigger part of my life where I'm going. Who knows? It could somehow. But as of now, it's not what I saw. This is what I saw in my vision. Right now, I'm busy with my mission. It's giving me money. It's feeding me every day. So I need it. Because the feeding that it's going, I can write books. I can publish. Now I'm having a very mega launch coming up. And it's funding that launch. My driving school is funding that launch of the book. Because the book cannot fund itself yet. So this, all of this, it's a vision where we are going. You understand what I mean? So, that's Give him a call. Next question. Did you just say you have a question? Oh, you said something else. Anybody with a question? Yes, again. Is it easy, sir? Never apologize <laughs> for asking questions. Yeah, I don't apologize. That's a good one, sir. Thank you for saying that. Okay. My question is, is it all, is it all of it, is it easy? Yo. Guess what my answer is. Why is it, those who are saying no, why is it not easy? Yes. Nah. Say it again, say it louder. Exactly. She says, if it was easy, everyone would be the best version of themselves. To be quite honest, guys, and this is the reality, I wouldn't recommend what I'm doing to anyone. I wouldn't recommend you pursuing the best version of yourself. I wouldn't, because it's hard. It's hard. And that is why we've got more, we've got less rich people than poor people. Because getting rich is hard. It takes a lot. But you know how they say that um, uh, when they say, like, when you love what you're doing, then what you're doing becomes a hobby. Yeah. Hey, That's must, where I'm asking from. Must be careful of motivational speakers. <laughs> 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 must be very careful. <laughs> so here's the thing. Here's the thing. You need to find. You need to. If, okay. I can give an example about me. What I love and my passion is the things I put on my vision board. See what I'm doing now. Speaking, I love it. It's a passion. It's a passion I have. But sometimes your passion won't pay you, and you need to live. So what do you do when your passion can't pay you? I really love sleeping. I'm passionate about sleeping, <laughs> to be quite honest. But sleeping does not pay. It won't give me that body that I want. So I sacrifice it to go and wake up at half past four every morning and go to the gym. So this idea of chasing what you love, wait a bit with that. It's going to hold you back for a very long time. It, it, it's not love that gets things done, guys. It's hard work. Hard work gets things done. And that also means you will do things you don't love doing for the sake of the outcome. Mm -hmm. Most of the things that are, are there on my vision board will require me to do things I don't love doing. I'm required to go around and ask for people to buy my book. I hate asking. <laughs> But I'm required to do that. Hey, buy my book. It's going to help you. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Because I have a goal to sell one million copies. You get what I mean? So don't pursue love. Love is not going to get things done. So if you find, just learn to love what you do. Don't try to do what you love. Learn to love what you do. Meaning, whatever you do, learn to love it and do your best at it. 
because it's helping you become. And this is a statement you should keep in mind. This is a statement you should keep in mind. It's not what you get. It's who you are becoming. Mm. That's the only motivational statement you should keep in your mind. <laughs> Anybody else with a question? Or let's flip it around. Who is learning something today? Is this valuable? Yes. Is this valuable? Yes. Sir, tell me what, 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 is the, what has been the key thing you've, you've, you've gotten so far? How to learn more. 100%. How to be prepared for that vision that you want. Yes. And who should I look at? Sir, what have you learned so far? Mm-hmm. And uh, if you are to give one distinction between a vision and a mission, Awesome. Awesome. At least you learned something. My lady, have you learned something today? What have you learned? Yes. Everything you do and everything, every direction you take should have a purpose. And sir, (laughs) why are they laughing at you? Were you like me, (laughs) bruh? Are you me back in the days? Everyone laughs before you talk. Uh, I've learned that uh, becoming a best vision of myself can be, it might be hard, but then uh, mission and vision can help me do that. Dope. Dope. You, ma'am. <laughs> Tell us. Um, I've learned that I need to identify my strengths and also use my strengths to create opportunities for me. Dope. 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 And, ma'am. Yes, you. Uh, well, I, I would say that I think for the longest time I, I had the question of how do you actually set a vision board? Because we see it on social media a lot. Everyone has a, a vision board now, but then how do you do it? And then the point where you ha- um, you showed that your mission was not on the, on the vision board, I think that's the mistake that I have been doing, mm. having my, my mission on the board, mm. but not actually having just the vision on it. So it takes me back a little bit. So I liked that. Beautiful. And it's interesting, once you start having that vision, guys, it's like automatic. Certain things I'm getting without even doing much. They just happen and I see myself, Evan, did I just get this? And it's leading me towards the vision. Because once you put it down, powerful, that thing speaks for itself. So I would challenge you, Try to go write a vision for yourself. Start with five years. I started with ten. The reason I started with five years, it's easier. It's easier to look at it and say, I'm, I'm closer to five years than ten years. So I can try and achieve that earlier. And here's another hack. When you do this vision, don't think, hey, today I'm broke. I can't say I'm going to have 20,000 rand next year. No, you don't think it like that. Think of the most impossible, outrageous. Once your mind can perceive it, or once your mind can conceive it, you can perceive it. So you just write it. Whatever you, your dream is, you know where now what you want in your life. You just write it down. Find a picture on social media and put it on your board. Make it beautiful. Find a beautiful one also so that it can make you feel nice. <laughs> because you can't put ugly things. Who want ugly things? So don't think of the, 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 the how. I don't know how I'm going to reach all of those things. I didn't know that one day I was going to come and teach students from UJ, but it builds my profile today. And that's a profile that I can add towards achieving my vision. Do you understand what I mean? So put down those things and let them guide you. Yes, ma'am. And so, yeah, so you... Yeah, you see, you, this is the time where I choose whether to lie or to tell the truth. <laughs> whether, to, whether to be a motivational speaker or to tell the truth. So this is what I do. And this is an honest answer. 
You see now you have timetables, né? You came here because you have a timetable, which told you that 20 past four, you have this lecture. At two, you had another one. And then there's a break in between. And then there's wara, wara, wara. Why is it so that after you finish school, you will resort to living your life without a timetable? That's where people start dying and falling off from the journey of life. Because of a timetable, you were able to get your degree. Why does it stop after? And you are still trying to achieve something. So after realizing that, because I had the same problem, being an entrepreneur, is that, that's the problem with an entrepreneur. Managing your time. You have no one who's telling you, I need this at this time. It's only you. And if you don't do it, what are you going to tell yourself? You have to understand. <laughs> <laughs> so you, have, you need to have something to keep you accountable. So I designed a timetable, and I, I, didn't, I didn't put it, I should have put it there, but I didn't put it there. I was going to show you my timetable. It's full. It shows me when I'm waking up at half past four. Five o'clock, I'm supposed to be at gym. Six o'clock, I'm back. And from six to seven, I'm supposed to be educating myself. How do I educate myself? Just by playing YouTube. I have speakers in my house, volume up. I listen to people telling me, you can do it. You can one on one. <laughs> While I'm doing whatever I'm doing. I'm learning. It's education. I'm learning. So my mind is always sharp. Another thing, interesting fact, my brother also, also does it. I didn't know. We found out now. When I get into my car, I don't play the radio. I don't listen to music. I want to listen to my mind. What do I have to tell myself? I'm not toxic to myself. I'm on my side. So I can listen to myself. So those things, I'm giving you an answer of what you should do. Not what I should do. And that is have a timetable for your life. That will tell you, wake up at this time. Do this at this time. Do this. Because I've got many different things that I'm doing. Many different uh, businesses. I've got driving school. I've got the public speaking thing I'm trying to do. I'm trying to sell books. So everything is divided into segments. Do I follow it all the time? No. I don't. But the fact that it's there, when I'm out of direction, I always go back. Do you understand? So... What I do on my day would be lying to you because every day is different. But what can help you is have a timetable for your life. Break down minutes, hour by hour, 30 minutes, one hour, 30 minutes, one hour. Break it down like that. Even your time to sleep, minute by 10. If you're going to text me after 10, you're not going to get me. I don't take calls after 10, after 9 p.m. Because by 10, I must be sleeping. Half past four is hard to wake up. Even now in this winter, half past four, I'm up. Hmm. Okay, so sir, so, um, how do you hold yourself accountable? Because it's easy to yeah to, to like fall off and yes. say no one knows because yes. it's only your good. Yeah, it's not easy to keep yourself accountable, my people. Yeah. It's not easy to keep yourself accountable. That's why it's important to have yourself a coach, a personal coach, a mentor. There's a difference between a coach and a mentor. A mentor doesn't really care much whether you succeed or not. You are receiving inspiration from them. You go to them, you have a question, they will answer to you, their lives go on. But a coach, more especially a coach that you can pay. I pay a coach. I have a coach that I pay so that they can help me improve my life. And I must report to this person. Every time I sit down with them, I tell them, I'm struggling in my business. I want to do this and this. They're like, okay, it's fine. Do this and this and this. Next week, I need a report back. They keep me accountable. And he's got a right to tell me that you are slacking and you're stupid. You're foolish. You're weak. You're not going anywhere with that attitude. He tells me straight to my face. And he's younger than me, which is more painful. <laughs> <laughs> on my birthday, on my birthday last week, he, he said this to me. Imagine, imagine, imagine this as a happy birthday message. Hey, happy birthday, happy birthday, my friend. So we are friends, but it's my coach and I pay him. Happy birthday, my friend. He's calling as a friend. You understand? Mm, hey, the pain I felt. Yeah, happy birthday, my friend. Ah, no, man, go grow well. You see now, you are old. So grow up. <laughs> you have to grow up. Imagine a birthday call. Happy birthday, and is a friend. Grow up. It's time to grow up. You've been slaking for too long. Why aren't you making money? Oh. Understand? He keeps me accountable. The point is, he keeps me accountable, and he's got a right to do that. So having a coach helps you to remain accountable. Also having, there's, a, there's, a, there's an app called any, any, any dot do, any do. That's what I use sometimes. It works very well. 
you write down your, your to-do, it's a to-do list. Keeps reminding you until you do it, you'll get tired. It doesn't get tired. It'll keep reminding you, and it counts the days that you are not doing. It's like you're on your day 17, you have not done this. Until you switch it off, you'll get annoyed and switch it off. But the fact that it keeps pestering you and reminding you will keep you accountable in a way. So you have to find things. Or have buddies, friends that you can be honest with. You know, sometimes this friendship thing doesn't work because you don't tell each other the truth, you guys. So have a friend that's going to tell you, my friend, now you are stupid. Now you are slaking. And she mustn't be angry. And here's a trick. Here's a hack, a life hack. This is my last thing I say. Last thing I say. Here's a life hack. If any relationship ends because you told the other party the truth, there was no relationship to begin with. Thank you. My brother, when you were on tables last week, what was happening? <laughs> yeah, when I was on tables, I was, I was in my moment. I was not wearing a suit. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know when he won the Toastmaster Championship, it was an online thing, national, so people from Bloemfontein were competing, people from Cape Town, you know, you choose your own background and everything. And then the topic was, is silence still golden? I guess you know the, the, the saying, silence is golden. The topic was, is silence still golden? And then people were coming, yes, silence is still golden, or silence is not anymore. You know, there's so much social media noise, etc. Do you want to hear how he started his? <laughs> That's exactly how he started his. My brother. Then he, he asked the question right back at them. Was, was that golden? My brother. We can't do a giveaway without you getting your own gift first. Thank so you, that's sir. from me to you, my brother. Thank you, sir. And then we'll end off with your book. Ne? Oh, yeah. We'll end off with your book. A lot of you picked up your hands when they asked about who's a Christian. Ne? So I want you to nominate somebody who's actually going to read the book. The gospel according to Jesus. The gospel according to Jesus. Can someone who said Koketo quickly tell us why? Quickly tell us why. Why did you, you guys overwhelmingly choose Koketo? That's the source. Excellent stuff, Koketo. And who's in love with love? <laughs> who's someone when you think love and love stories and who do you think about? How many names do we have? There's a Nero and there's a... There's Valentine, there's Valentine, there's... And then there's Nero. Can we have a, can we have a quick poll? Yay for Valentine. Yay for Nero. Gary, there was additional names more. Perfect Love, The Absence of Fear by Koto Dineo Mashile. Okay. Now I'm getting serious. Now I'm getting serious. Ne? 
Who has a poor dad and a rich dad? Okay. Who's into financial literacy to the point that they share the knowledge, they read the books, they watch the content? Who's into that type of content in this class? The perfect book if you are getting into it. Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Okay. I'm running out of gifts here. Who after today will really discover their destiny based on the vision and mission goal? <laughs> All of you, ne? All of you. But who was asking keen questions here? Yeah. Remember, the, the key is always engaging with me and, and making the guest feel at home. No, nominate quickly two people. Who? Okay. Here's one. Yay, yay. Yeah? Okay. <laughs> Discover your destiny by Tony Evans. I got it from a mentor of mine, so really use it. There was a time when we were part of the Standard Bank uh, Enterprise Development Program back in 2017. And there was this leader, this, this young leader, Monisha, who runs a legal firm. And so she was teaching us the technicalities around running a business from a legal perspective. So there's a book here, Snapshot Your Business, a simple legal guide for entrepreneurs. Who do you nominate? Amanda. Who's Amanda? Oh, okay. okay. Pass it on. And then besides Terence, who else is into politics, the upliftment of the black mind, challenges around... <laughs> who else? Lerato. <laughs> Capitalist nigga. And who's your second option, my brother, in terms of the five rand university by Miracle Chawan? Okay, a person who was engaging with me. A person who was engaging with me. Ah, it happens to be that lady. Ah, but she's got a book already. Got a book, yeah, a second book. option, a second option. Who's who? Oh, yes. Okay. Okay, guys. Okay, guys. It's time to get. It's time to get serious. Say it with me. It's time to get serious. It's time to get serious. Okay, so I've marked your script. Yeah. <laughs> but can I ask a favor? Can I give them to you next week? Yes. And then do you give me permission to to press to press Anna Hyde on your assignments? Your assignments um, have been marked, but they are hidden. The marks are hidden from you. So are you giving me permission to press and hide? Yes. Okay, then tonight you'll sleep knowing how the assignments went. Amen. Yes. Then next week we'll be with our assessment. Have a safe trip home, everybody. Listen.
Ya, tena sisi. 